Hello everyone, welcome to this update on our circuit consultations. I wanted to share the outcomes of our recent meeting on Monday. Don't forget that we had our circuit prayer initiative with people praying across the circuit for our working party of representatives from each church, one rep from each church, as we discern how God is leading us forward into the future here in the Peterborough circuit. Before I begin, I'd like to mention that following this recording, there's a separate video entitled Skip the Beat, produced by the Methodist Church. It invites us to reflect on the difference that the Holy Spirit makes. Let's revisit those three guiding words, listening, following, changing. Listening to God, our Father in heaven, and listening to each other following Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, and changing, being open to change through the power of the Holy Spirit, because unless we change, we die. And even though we might find change difficult, change is often good. I want to first acknowledge the powerful prayer session that took place during our meeting and how I was moved before the meeting by the prayer that took place in the room as people joined hands around the table. It really did speak to me about what we're doing, not just about being a meeting of people, uh, about being a circuit though, working together. Everyone worked together so well during our meeting. There were important questions for clarification. No, the circuit cannot close churches that are fulfilling their obligations. You can't be going bust or on the road to going bust. You need to fulfil your statutory requirements in your key posts. But apart from that, the future is in your hands, or rather God's future for you is in your hands and you need to be open. We also talked a lot about the temptation to simply do something or take on an initiative because it makes us feel better as if we're being productive without asking the question, well, how is it making a meaningful difference? And it's crucial that we don't undermine the good week that work that's being done in our churches. The most important immediate action that we are focusing on is supporting Dogstorp. They have a dedicated ministry to reaching out to those who are poor. There's an urgent meeting this Sunday. So if I were thinking, well, you know, there's not as much progress as I like, to be quite frank, as we rally to support around that, uh, with Reverend Janet leading, a uh, circuit steward present, um, Karen, our treasurer present, uh, then, you know, that, that is a, a significant focus uh, as we make preparations for that already. Another area of progress beyond the clarification was nine questions that we brought together before the meeting. Nine questions that we felt would be helpful for local churches. And what we envisaged is that as we worked around the table, each representative would be able to think, well, three, three and questions three, four and seven are really helpful for our church. We could put those. But what we actually found is that every single representative found that every single question was helpful for their church. And originally we thought, well, if we can sift through and prioritise, we might be able to find key questions for church councils. In the end, it's turned out that that, if you've got nine questions, is going to be too challenging uh, to be able to manage. So what's happening is that led by our representatives, our church stewards and our leadership teams are going to survey opinion across the churches over a three to four week period in the best way that they can find is possible for them. It's a bit of a catch-22. Some people would just want us to go, tell us what to do and we'll do it. But I'm, I don't think that's healthy. Um, other people will want to be consulted from the earliest stages. Actually, tell us what to do doesn't really speak to me about being involved and taking responsibility. What was groundbreaking was to see church leaders come together in openness, honesty and trust and understanding the challenges we face and our strength. That kind of collaboration in that way 
is groundbreaking. We're already seeing immediate action on other fronts. Oundle circulated all of the questions to its members by email. Westgate New Church prepared a letter adjusting some of the questions so it would fit in their context. And it was agreed on Tuesday that it would go to all church members overnight. Brookside, and a big shout out to Chris Hardman here, who produces their weekly newsletter. They included the questions in their sheet on the reverse side with a note to say... How does this interest you? Would you like to talk to Cathy, their representative, moving forward? I know that Southside had a leadership team meeting earlier in this week. What I'm seeing is our representatives taking responsibility. In fact, that was my question. Do, do I need to do any more to enable this? The answer came back, no. Everybody knows what we've got to do and we're committed to it. Do please be praying for our circuit stewards as they continue to work on a profile that outlines the skills and gifts that we will require in a future superintendent. Do please keep on praying for our ongoing conversations with the United Reformed Church, just so that we can understand the costs of ministry moving forward. In fact, one of the really wonderful things about our time together was the contribution made by our partner churches, who are limited in some ways, but are definitely on this journey with us. Finally, I want to share a bit of hope. The hope that we have to encourage people to put their faith in Jesus and follow. I led a funeral service this week at the crematorium for somebody who's linked with one of our families who attends uh, one of our churches. And he died at a young age. There were lots of young people there. I got that sense of privilege of being able to bring hope to people who are journeying through grief and I hold that belief that through the way in which we present ourselves prevent our faith even in quite formal ways people are encouraged and yes I had conversations moving forward encouraging people to attend their local churches my point is is that we need to be encouraged by the, sh the green shoots of growth that we see it's the parable of the kingdom of God being like a seed this week and the mustard tree uh, that we need to be encouraged by the good signs that are around us the positive conversations we had and on another front I am following up on people who have already encountered Jesus who are already on the fringes of being involved in life of the church and I'm moving those conversations on I've certainly been asking how would you feel about taking up membership in the church and we're getting some positive responses back as we all work together so I'm looking to move those conversations forward so be encouraged but this this is the main focus of all of our work so i want to just return to those three words once again listening to god listening to each other following jesus being open to change by the power of the holy spirit god bless you and our prayers with our stewards and our leadership teams as they survey our churches in the best way possible but we also pray to God for strength that they have that conviction to act and speak on behalf of the local church as the leadership there. Amen. And as promised for those of you who've got the time still to watch out I introduce Skip a Beat this wonderful video produced by the Methodist Church that reminds us about how the Holy Spirit can transform our lives. There's a rhythm. We all feel it. A beat that keeps us alive. The metronome of life, pulsing, pumping. It's all around us. The progress, the motion, the noise. We crave it and we curse it. The daily grind, the striving, the emptiness. The rhythm keeps on going and going and going. What if there's more? What if we need to skip a beat? In 1738, at a gathering of Christian believers on Aldersgate Street in London, a career priest struggling with his own faith had an experience that changed his life. His name was John Wesley. 
that after hearing a Christian teaching, he felt his heart strangely warmed. He'd known God intellectually, but now he knew God in his heart. Christians sometimes call this a conversion experience, an encounter with the Holy Spirit, like being born again, like skipping a beat. In the Bible, Jesus' disciples had an experience like this too at Pentecost. They had been continuing the daily grind of teaching about Jesus' death and resurrection amongst his believers. But then in one moment, it all changed. They had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, tongues of fire. They went out on the streets and started speaking in different languages, sharing the good news of Jesus. They skipped a beat and their lives were never the same. John Wesley's experience transformed his way of life and kick-started the Methodist movement that still exists today. How will God cause your heart to skip a beat?